Tories always continue, Pam. This is Pam Long, who's visiting with me today from Benton. Are you from Bentonville, actually, or you live in Lowell, right? Lowell, Lowell mm -hmm. Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And you're a native Arkansan. Mm -hmm. Raised right here in the neighborhood. Absolutely. And your f husband was from this area too. Absolutely. So you've never left this part of Arkansas. Well, just on trips. Always come back. Always come home. Yep. Well, you had a reason to, because you have a large family too, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your family. I have three grown and married children, and I have. Uh, uh, five grandchildren, one is already in heaven, have four here with us and one's already in heaven. And that's what we're talking about today, a book that you've written called Trust in the Yord. The Yord, if I were to see that anywhere else, I would think that that was some kind of Star Wars word. You would, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, Hunter had a, a really big problem with his L's. He yiked Yeti bugs, uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. And uh, the day that he, uh, he was quite a rounder, and um, he, his mom and daddy always took him to church. He went to Sunday school every Sunday. And Chris and Greta, his mom and dad, knew that he uh, was given mem verses to memorize. But on the drive home, they would always ask him, um, what verse did you have today? Nothing. You didn't have a verse today? No. You didn't learn? No. Your teacher didn't? No. But September 26, 2000, uh, 2004, was on a Sunday, they're driving home. Chris said, I didn't even bother to ask because I knew, you know, what the answer was. And out of the clear blue sky, Hunter's in the back seat. He says, yes, and daddy. And Chris said, okay. And he's continuing to drive. And Hunter says, trust and do your with all your heart. That's Proverbs 3, 5. And that afternoon, we were really going to need to do that because that was the day that he drowned in a creek behind our home. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Boy, the things that pulls out of our heart, it's, it's Absolutely. always there. Absolutely. But there's a, a real passionate story around this, too. As you go through this process of losing a grandson, mm -hmm. what have you gained from that experience? The thing I think I've realized the most is that there are so many hurting people out there that have gone through, I mean, losing a grandson, losing a child, um, losing a husband, a wife, a sister, a grandmother. I don't care who it is, it's painful. And uh, there is a journey that we all have to take through that grief. And um, some people, they don't travel very well in that journey. Um, other people do. And it was my um, intent in writing the book to share what I have learned on my journey hopefully that it would help someone else on theirs. Mm -hmm. Where has that journey taken you to now? Uh, well I'm actually uh, leading a grief share group at our church. Grief share is a national organization but it is a it's like a grief support group uh, for people that want to come. It is a, a faith-based organization um, and it's opened the doors for me to speak to folks, uh, different groups, and, uh, and I intend to do some more of that, hopefully, as time progresses, about not only uh, your journey through grief, but also uh, speaking to other people about being good comforters. Hmm. Um, that's an important lesson I think we don't teach enough today. Uh, if the puppy dies or the bird dies or uh, the car gets broken, we just go buy a new one, we replace it, we go on, don't cry, don't, it'll be okay, you know. And uh, stuffing your grief is very, very, uh, it's, that's a serious, a serious mistake. It's important that you get your grief out, talk about it, have someone, you know, travel with you on that journey, and, and that hopefully that's what we do in, in Grief Share. And this grief intensity is not necessarily just about losing someone to, to a death. No. I mean, this is losing someone in divorce or a, loss. a, chi a loss of any kind. Mm -hmm. Anytime mm -hmm. someone's pulled out of your circle, there's something has to fill that hole, isn't it? Absolutely. There? You, uh, I know, you know, financially right now, a lot of people have suffered loss of their homes, their jobs their uh, spouses through, as you said, divorce, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So there are a lot of different kinds of losses. And some people take the bad way out with suicides and Absolutely. alcohol and Absolutely. drug abuse. And others have to look and go find their find their way back to the middle of the road. Isn't it? That's right. That's right. Well, I think you're a perfect example of why, why there are ditches on the sides of right, life's road. It's to show you where the middle is. Mm. And I, think that <laughs> I that's, like that. That's, yeah, you, yeah, you can use that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> we hope that you'll take a look at Trust in the Yord. It's Hunter's Story by Pam Long. Mm -hmm. It's got some beautiful family pictures in it, and it's just a nice little booklet, very mm -hmm. easy read, and uh, 
I would think that this story would be important for, for uh, even 10, 11, 12 year olds could understand this story. I believe so. I believe so. Um, young young uh, teenagers and you know that's a that's another group that's a little misunderstood too and they get a little forgotten in that journey of grief because we as adults get so wrapped up in what we've lost sometimes the kiddos suffer too. Well, some people still live by the adage, if you, when you turn 13, you go into a box and you don't get out till you're 29. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way it is, because every single person in our family, whether it's a small child or a teenager or even a married child, the relationship that started, started from an eternal base, and it is for eternity, whether Absolutely. it's in this world, walking this earth, or in the next world, we are always kin. Absolutely. Always. I love that. that I'm going to use that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm giving her a whole new book here, I hope. You really are. Well, how can we get a copy of uh, Trust in the Yard? Uh, you can just uh, email me because I've just put this out basically myself. Um, you can email me at uh, lnwh05 LN at cox-internet.com. And, you know, I can send one out to you. Uh, hopefully I'll be speaking around in the area and, you know, someone will see me there or whatever. But email is probably the best way to reach me right now. And if you would like to have a guest speaker for one of your banquets, your church uh, right. organizations right. or grief groups, whatever, whatever the need is where you need a little motivation and a little butter put on your bread, I think Pam would be the person to call, don't you? <laughs> Thanks, Norm. <laughs> Appreciate that. Got a new friend here too. Well, I thank you for taking the time to talk with us today and about this. And thank you. Uh, I know the folks in the country will appreciate the story, and uh, and they'll lift you in prayer and lift you up. And hopefully, you'll get some speaking engagements out there. And uh, Hunter's right. story is going to go all over the country. Awesome. I believe it. Awesome. Hey, we're going to be back in just a little while with more of the Out of the Norm show. I hope you won't go away. There's always good stories from anywhere about people, places, things, and event. Why? Well, because of stories.